Jesus teaches us today to think about that person. That person that we believe has done something that shouldn't be done. Although, in this story, where is the man? Like, seriously, where is the man? Like, why isn't he also being stoned? Um, he shows us, in some ways, the path of forgiveness that we've been studying, right? That one of the things that has to be done is the story has to be told. And so they told the story of her sin, but it didn't get to the heart of the sin, right? Like one of the things we said is the first step is to tell the story, to share all the facts and the details, to get out the information about the hurt and pain that has been caused to you. The next step then is to share your feelings or your hurt. And in this story, they sort of skip that, right? They have just decided that she is guilty and therefore should be punished. And Jesus wants to make them think about their own lives, what they have done, what they haven't done, what they've left undone. And so he asked them, if you really want to punish her, if you really want to punish her for this sin, show me that you haven't sinned. And then he waits. He waits not watching them, not judging them, not showing them that they are wrong. He waits. I mean, you wonder what he's writing on the ground. Is he writing over and over again a prayer word? that calms and centers him? Is he doing that because he wants them to be able to let go? And then one by one, they start walking out, leaving just Jesus and the woman. <coughs> the third step in our process was granting forgiveness. And Jesus asked her, has no one condemned you? And he says, neither will I. And the final step in the process is what we are talking about today, which is renewing and releasing. Like, what do you do after you have said the words of forgiveness? After you have shared the story, named your hurt, granted that person forgiveness, What's next? And what Tutu argues in this book is that the final step is that you have to release the person or you have to renew your relationship with that person. So in the book, The Book of Forgiving, Desmond Tutu shares the story of his relationship with P.W. Botha, who was known as the Great Crocodile. He was the leader of South Africa when apartheid was pulled down and a new government was formed. And so, Titi says that he had three pastoral visits with Botha in his lifetime. The first visit happened during apartheid where he was with a bunch of other religious leaders had signed a petition that they wanted to present to the leader of South Africa to save five men and a woman who had been charged with killing and were going to be executed within a few days. And so he is the one given by the group, since he's the Archbishop of Cape Town, to go to the president's residence office and talk to him about those lives to request that he save them. And Titi says he thought it was going to go well. 
There were signs of hope and progress that things were going to change. And then when he got there, that hope slowly dindled away. And at a certain point, he says, Botha started doing what he did to all people, pointing his finger and shaking it at him and treating him unkindly. And Tutu said at that point, he got angry and started saying to Botha, I am not a child. You don't need to treat me as if I was a child. And he said that it did not end well and he left angry. Skip forward 10 years. The apartheid regime has fallen and Nelson Mandela is now president of South Africa. And Desmond Tutu has his next pastoral visit with both of them. In this visit, he has been charged by Nelson Mandela as part of the Truth and Reconciliation Committee to go to Botha and invite him to sit on the stage right next to Nelson Mandela and to share the truth. And so he goes again to visit him in his role as the Archbishop of Cape Town, in his role as one of the leaders of the Truth and Reconciliation Committee, and the answer he gets in return is no. No, I won't sit there on the stage. I won't sit next to Nelson Mandela and speak the truth about what happened, about what I did. How do you move from those two incidents into a point where you can forgive that person? Because in this case, it is a leader who allowed horrible things to happen to people under his watch. It is a leader who let his soldiers hurt and kill black people who let police officers terrorize whole communities, who put people behind fences in camps. How do you grant that person forgiveness who the two encounters that you've had with them have not gone the way that you wanted them to? Who himself has not acknowledged what he has done? How do you move to forgiveness? And how do you renew the relationship and release that person? Tutu says he had one final encounter with both of them. One past, final pastoral visit. And it was at the time when both of his wife had died. And he says at that point, what he was coming to Botha as was not two adversaries on different sides of the political argument, but he was coming to him as a husband who loves his wife deeply. He was coming to him as the pastor who would be with him in his grief. And he says, I have forgiven him. And in that moment, in his pain, he was able to release release all that was inside those negative feelings. And this may be the hardest step on the path of forgiveness. Whether you choose to renew the relationship or you choose to release the relationship. For those who are family members or close friends, for those it's a little easier to renew the relationship because you don't want it to break completely. And so you learn how to forgive because you want to move forward. With those who have harmed you that aren't a close family member or a friend, 
it's a little harder and sometimes impossible to renew the relationship. Instead, what you often have to do is release it. And he says that one of the ways you do that is if you can't encounter them yourselves, if you can't form a relationship with that person because of the serious harm or the danger that it will put you in, or because they are already dead, that you need to find a person that can listen to you, that can empathize with you, that will believe you, that will understand what happened, that allows you that space to share and tell the story. So the example they give in this book is of a family whose daughter had been killed in South Africa. She was an um, aid worker, missionary, who, had, who was there and got accidentally, randomly caught in the violence and was killed. And he shares the story of the parents. How do you move from being caught in a place of deep grief because your child has been taken you in a random act of violence because of the structure of the system. How do you move forward? And they end up wanting to show what it means to reconcile, to renew the relationship with those who have harmed them. And they set up a organization in their daughter's name to help people. And they got to know one of the men that was involved in the killing. And they learned how to work through their relationship with him so that they could go out together and share how you move forward when the worst thing you can imagine has happened. But they also share the story of Mofa, his daughter, and I told you the beginning of the story where in her house her maid had been killed by someone. Well, the rest of the story is that they think it ended up being the gardener. And Mofo felt deep guilt about this because she kept employing this gardener even though he wasn't reliable because of the relationship she had with the family. And so he is arrested for it. I, the trial, I don't think, has happened when the book is written. But they say in this chapter, sometimes you're not ready. You're not ready to release and renew. You're not ready to take that next step. And that's okay. It's okay to know that you aren't ready to let go of what has happened. But one of the main things that I got out of this chapter is he believes that this step, renewing and releasing, shows us how to live this important concept in um, their culture called Ubuntu. Meaning that I am because you are. He says the real translation of this word is humanity. That we are invited to take and know that every other person we encounter is part of our shared humanity. That I can't be who I am without all of you also being who you are. That we are in this relationship that is never ending and never stopping and we need to renew those relationships. That in order for the world to heal, in order for ourselves to heal, we have to learn to see the humanity that is present in everyone around us. I think this is the hardest thing for us right now. Our world has, in the United States has become so divided. 
that we have a tough time experiencing the humanity of those who are different from us. We have come into camps where we don't want to talk about their humanity, experience their humanity, and realize that we can't be if they aren't. How do we do that? Because right now, we aren't willing to. We're willing to fight to the death about our positions and opinions, but we're not willing to sit down at the table and share a meal and hear how we're more alike than different. And that is at the crux of what's wrong here in the United States. We have seen each other as the enemy and are now talking about it. Have you in your lifetime ever heard so much talk about civil war? Ever. This is something we are, should be ashamed of that happened a long time ago. And yet we're talking about doing it again. And what Tutu wants to say to us is there is a different path. There is a way out of this. But the way out of it is hard. It requires speaking the truth, telling the story, all of the facts, whether you want to hear the facts or not hear the facts, to hear the truth. To express your pain in that truth. And then to forgive each other so that we can move forward together. Because I can't be if you aren't. That we together can be stronger. And that's what Jesus' entire ministry is about. Showing us that all those people that have been pushed aside and left out, who have been thrown away, are the very people we are to form relationships with. And that the people who drive us the craziest because they believe stuff that we don't believe are the very people we go out to dinner with so that we can share the truth of God's love. And that's the hardest part about being a Christian, right? That one of the things we are asked to do is to move through those boundaries. To forgive even in the places where it is the hardest. So I invite you to remember that we are all in this together. That we cannot be without each other. Amen.